some of the strangest little guys out there in the deep sea. These animals, commonly known as sea pigs for their squishy pink appearance, are in fact deep sea cucumbers that are in the genus of scotoplans. These animals have particularly large tube feet, which in their case, take on a more typically leg-like appearance. They have 5-7 to seven pairs of these enlarged tube feet, whereby they inflate and deflate sequentially the water cavities within them to move about. There are three species of them, being S. angelicus, S. mutabilis, and S. globasa, the latter being the first described and also the most well known. They were found by Jalma Thiel, a Swedish scientist who was on the HMS Challenger expedition between the years of 1873 and 1876, with him describing them in 1882. These animals are found all throughout the world's oceans in the deepest and darkest regions, with them mainly living on the abyssal plains in the case of S. globasa, oftentimes 6,000 metres down. So no matter where you are, from New Zealand, India, America, Western Europe, and even Antarctica, these fellas are bound to either be scuttling below you, or just off the coast. Sea pigs are deposit feeders, and so obtain their food by extracting organic particles from deep sea mud, with them showing a strong preference for organic foods, rich in nutrients that has freshly fallen from the ocean surface, and they use their strong olfactory capabilities to seek out fresh food sources, like whale corpses. To better find foods, they have been observed to face in directions often against the currents, which helps them to better navigate around and find their foods, with them often congregating in massive densities, hundreds strong, with a group name being known as a trawl. Their congregation and great numbers do however mean that ocean-going parasites are fond of them, with small gastropods like Stilopex and Crinolamia boring small holes in their bodies to live in. They are also accompanied by small king crabs, Neolithoides diamedea, where it is estimated that about 22% of sea pigs have them on their bodies. The knowledge of this relationship is one which is so far quite limited, though our main idea is that they latch onto the sea pigs to both gain access to valuable nutrients, but also for a form of transport across the ocean floor to save energy. The sea pig host may also get some protection from them, though as of now anyways, scientists are unsure as to whether the relationship between sea pigs and these crabs is a mutualistic or commensal one. Sea pigs aren't the largest of animals, being about 10 to 15 centimetres or 46 inches in length, with their sticky bodies being a translucent white colour which gives them their name. The structures they have on their heads, which appear to be antennae, also aren't. They are actually additional tube feet. These extra head feet may help them to propel themselves around the ocean when they do need to swim, or they could have some kind of sensory function to help them better pick up on the locations of food, but specific details on this are inconclusive as is the case with most deep sea animals. Despite being squishy and not all that imposing on the surface, they do have their defences, namely that their skin is actually toxic, with them having a chemical called holothurin, which is especially dangerous since it can rupture red blood cells. And with such a potency, it's certainly something that gives them the edge when it comes to living in their barren environments. As they get around said environments, sea pigs, like all the animals, need to respire, but how they do so is certainly unorthodox, at least to us anyways. Like all echinoderms, sea pigs have a poorly developed respiratory system since they don't have a respiratory tract, and so instead breathe directly out of their anus. Yes, they are indeed quintessential ass breathers. Around the area while we're on the topic, sea pigs are also known to only contain one gonad, something which is the case across both male and female individuals, something which makes them very different to other echinoderms. To conclude, our knowledge on these animals continues to increase, as a new species was described just last year from the clarion Clipperton zone in the Northeast Pacific Ocean, which has been nicknamed as the Barbie Pig in reference to the Barbie film that came out a year before, due to them having a striking hot pink coloration. Frustratingly, their habitat encompasses regions which are often earmarked as areas for deep sea mining, mainly for manganese nodules, which are key in many technologies, which then leads to a big dilemma economically and ecologically. Of course, these short-sighted economic ambitions greatly threaten many deep-sea animal habitats, and so these practices must be treated with great concern and disdain, given that if they're targeted, it could well lead to mass extinctions and also an altering of said environments. And given that sea pigs have a very slow turnover period, and also that the habitats have a slow sediment turnover, these plans, if they're granted at such a big scale, means that any recovery of these animals and their environments would be extremely slow. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.